Hey guys, it's Maxi here and welcome to our TW video. You join us as we now finish 2021 and this is our episode where we'll go ahead and reveal the rest of the year, the various other awards in the TW universe and of course the version and game of the PWI 500. As always, before we get into the episode, so thank you for watching, it's deeply appreciated, hope you do enjoy it. Let us know who's been the wrestler of the year in your particular saves, have you noticed certain wrestlers from certain promotions winning it? Let us know what you've won in terms of if you managed to win company of the year, show of the year, and if you've got any gazzles or screenshots of your particular show, please don't hesitate to put them in the comments section below. Of course as well, thumbs up and thumbs down are deeply appreciated, and any subs if you are new around here are deeply appreciated, it means these will drop into your inbox this particular series every Sunday, and of course, we've got the WWE series every Thursday as well, as long as some football manager content. Let's crack on then, shall we? So, we better know this before we kick in. We're going to stay in MTV. Um, ABC doesn't want another wrestling program, so that's fine. Raw will stay. SmackDown will continue to get the bigger ratings. Who'd have thought that? Um, it also means that the highest ratings ever had in the series is on SmackDown. Good to see that because we've been cracking out good shows again, momentum's hitting a an, up, an uprise in fortunes, so that's good. It was just a couple of bad shows. Probably me just lazing it out to just try and get through it quicker. But yeah, we're on the right track. And of course, this month does see the Royal Rumble, so we'll have obviously our men's Royal Rumble. And a bit late because of when it was in real life, but we are going to have our first ever women's Royal Rumble. The right to face the champion at WrestleMania. But today is all about the wrestler of the year. Let's find out. And I'm afraid to say it is not a WWE athlete, it is someone who of course left for Japan, and it is, jointly, Roman Reigns. He is the top wrestler in the world, so I'll probably have a lot of great matches in Japan. Well, of course, we've maybe not had guys as consistent, so he picks up the wrestler of the year award. I believe it's his first time, yep, first time he's gained the honour. Cup of the year, thankfully, as I say, we've continued to be fantastic, so for the seventh time, including before me, they have won the uh, company of the year. So that's the good to see, you know, great 2021. Let's keep going into the new year. So that's good, we've won that. I'll also go into the end of the year awards here and, and show you previous winners as well. Team of the year was quite surprising. Despite splitting at summer, uh, sorry, at Money in the Bank, it was the second year in a row for the team of Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Obviously now rivals who hate each other again. But they picked it up for the second year in a row, obviously. That title run continued through the Rumble, WrestleMania, just after Mania. Well, they lost it to Devil and Devitt and Anderson. And then Kevin turned into a bad, bad man. Match of the year was a random tag match we booked on Raw. It was Kenny Omega and Samoa Joe defeating Okada and Ibushi. When the Omega and Ibushi feud was drawn near its conclusion. But we were starting to build up Okada versus Joe. So that's good to see. Money in the Bank won Show of the Year. So I'm delighted with that because we went all in on that show. And of course, that was Roman Reigns' last show where Kevin Owens decided, uh, I'm taking Money in the Bank, I'm taking the championship. And yeah, it really kicked on where we went from there. Matteo Nunes, a regenerated wrestler, is the Young Wrestler of the Year. They're written deal, unfortunately, but they seem to be a luchador for CMLL. Came into the save in 2018, so yep, I won't be seeing him in WWE anytime soon. Veteran wrestler there went to Tanahashi, so that's his second time winning it at the age of 45. The problem is, any wrestler that as soon as they hit 41 for us, seem to get quite a bad declining physical ability, so like say AJ won't ever get to that level. Female wrestler of the year, again another WWE star, and it was Becky Lynch winning it for the second time. She won it in 2016 for the first year, so the first season uh, in the save, 2016, and then 2021, so two best of the years. Of course, she had a, a championship run, and she was booked like nothing else, but second one for her. But anyway, she's 34 now, so obviously females peak earlier, but they also decline earlier, so I expect her probably to drop down the card very soon. Most Improved Company went to Smash Wrestling. Independent Wrestler of the Year went to Rhino. Okay, very strange way it's Rhino, but as I say, pretty cool. 
that he's left WWE and went on to do well. Manager of the year, names no introduction, Paul Heyman. Probably use them most in the last year we have in the whole series, but the leader, the manager of the Magnificent Seven, claims this, uh, this award. And then Sevilla went to Kurt David. I'm going to have to look at him. He's won it four years in a row. He's in our development. It might just be time to just put him in the, as the main guy. He came into the save in 2017, so he's not real. But we may as well use him since we've got him signed up. Our commentator went to Nigel McGuinness for the first time. Of course, he is part of the team, I believe, on... Is he on Smack? I think he's on Smack then, but he's definitely on NXT. And yeah, he's just been really, really good. And referee of the year went to Insuke Yoshoka. I've probably butchered that horribly wrong. So quite cool. Uh, when you go to the end of the year awards, you can see there, um, we've pretty much had one year where it wasn't a New Japan guy, when Johnny Fatu won it. But since then, it's just been people based in New Japan. So that's up to us to try and maybe try and win that again next year. Tag Team of the Year. Done well with uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Probably the reason why we're looking at getting the Shield back together. We're looking to get a few other tag teams, American Alpha, to really push on our tag divisions. Young wrestler. We don't really have any young up and comers, you know. Let's be honest. Uh, under 24 is all going to be fictional characters in the save now, so I'm tending to stay away from that. So we probably won't have that for any future. But you never know, you know, it might be that awkward crossover where fictional characters come in, so technically they're not in the Cornell verse as it is, but they may, may try to integrate them in some sort of way. We'll see how people receive them. In fact, I don't know how you would feel um, if there was fictional characters that came in, people that are in this database because they've, they've been generated, and, and if you'd be happy for me to try and create characters there. Tanahashi wins it for the second time, so this award's been three winners, all twice, El Zorro, Tanahashi, and Togi Makabe. Female wrestler, as I say, a second time for Becky Lynch. Probably helped by the fact that uh, the pregnancy of Dana Brooke, that she'll be back. Not in time for the Rumble, but in time for WrestleMania. So it's going to be good to get her and Ali back. Independent wrestler. Well, there's been some strange ones. You know, when you've got the Kareem Kelly winning it one year, it's always going to be very strange. WWE, so we've won it my first year in the last three other two years. Um, New Japan won it, I'm trying to think. So it counts 2016 as the first year because we aye, because we started in 2016, so that's fine. Most improved company went to Smash, we're never going to win that. Uh, match of the year, another one for WWE. And so look, see what we've got here. So Roman and Drew won it the year before. And Randy and Baron Roman as well. So yes, yeah, Samoa Joe's second. Um, well, at least under WWE banner, I'm pretty sure he'd have it. Now, I thought the one against um, Daniels and Styles would have made it, but it's all been WWE matches apart from Bailey vs. Sasha. And of course, the CM Punk one against Shingo Pigaki at Dragon Gate. Card the year, so it's the fifth one of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, fifth of the six, so Wrestle Kingdom won it in 2019. We've won every other time this year with a 100 reign, so that's good to see. Certainly be able to do that again. Paul Heyman's third manager of the year, second under the save. Ties that up with Talia Madison, of all people. And this is a year, four years in a row, so we probably do need to push him going forward. Our commentator, first one for Nigel McGuinness, after three years in a row for Saraya Knight. Referee, as I say, don't really bother about that. Yeah, pretty cool. To see. So we're in a good position. As I say now, we'll, we'll flick through the Power 500 to see who we've got. So Roman Reigns in position 1, followed by Toshida, which was quite a surprise. Taguchi third, and then Okabayasi in fourth, up from number 7. He's been very, very consistent. Our top guys, Fergal Devitt, is his highest placing at number 5. Obviously, in a few years out because of the racism in game, but he's back. He's pretty much cleared his name, and he's now back as yeah, one of the top guys, former champion now again, sitting in fifth place. Sixth place was to Sami Zayn, down a few places from last year, but it's his second year inside the top ten. And Patrick Clark continues to be impressive, 17th last year, 
up to 7th in the world this year. Okada, we just need to look at that every year since 2015 inside the top 20 in a good position in 8th. Yoshino in at 9th and Nakamura in at 10th. So pretty cool there. I'd love to get Shinsuke back, but I doubt it. Because there are so many WWE stars, we are going to look through all the top 500, but just the WWE guys. So we'll click through them, as many as we can, in a short space of time. Seth Rollins in at 13, stays where he was last year. But Daniel Bryan up to 15th after a 47th position last year. So good for Daniel, getting back up the rankings. Dean Ambrose jumps down a few places. He's never really made the top 10, but always constantly in the top 25. So that's good for him. Jonathan Fatu, the number one wrestler in the world last year, down to 19. I'll be honest, maybe a bit of a spoiler. Probably going to put the wrestlers back together. It's just not what the single athletes, and I don't really have space for them at the top. Uh, Toros, who we'd signed, is 20th, of course, known as Mystique. We'll probably give them a good push in the new year. So that's the top 20 covered. I've clicked through too much. Quite a few names I can see popping up there. Ricochet at 22, up 200 places. He got a good push this year. So based on match ratings, he got a good push and done well. That's good to see. Uh, next up for us, The Miz at 28. Got Kevin Owens at 29, down from number 4. Joshua Fatu, down to 31. He's obviously got a lot of lesser matches, jobbing out on Raw. Adam Cole at 34. He's leaving us, and he's down. He's up at 34. Was a great one with Fergal Devitt, but Carl Anderson, and there at 34, he's now obviously back to New Japan. Champa up at 36, and not far behind until old rival Johnny Gargano. Next up was a Bushi at 42. So again, it's guys you'd expect to be up here. Chad Gable at 44. Cien Almas. First big year since 2015. So yeah, he's really started to improve. I'm probably going to put in a good push for him. Kofi up at 48, down a little bit. Samoa Joe down to 49 from 41 the previous year. Uh, that's the top 50. 52, Rusev. 53, Matt Jackson. 54, Nick Jackson. 56, Zack Sabre Jr. Crazy that Damien Sandow, Aaron Stevens, Aaron, whatever he's called, uh, wherever he is now, uh, in the top 57. He's done well. Baron Corbin at 59. You can think of the big names that still to appear. Ray Wyatt at 60. Drew McIntyre 61. Orton 62. Former wrestler Nino DiBano in there. CM Punk at 65. Who'd have thought Murphy from 352 up to 66. Kenny Omega 67. Pete Dunne 69. And he's only going to get higher with a good 200 increase in his position. Noam Dar, 73, another massive climb. So you can see from that the inclusion of the Magnificent Seven. Certainly helping them. Uh, Luke Harper at 77, which is good to see. 80 for Braun Strowman, so a little increase from the previous year. Bo Dallas down at 82. There you go. First time in the ranking, straight in at 86, Axel Dyther Jr. Marcel Barfell, and he's only going to get better. I'm aiming to make him a consistent top 10 guy. Really getting in a push for him. Which is quite mad because I've never watched any independent stuff. And I, didn't, I don't watch many foreign companies, so I don't watch many XW. Or WXW, sorry. Um, shows my, my knowledge there. But I've heard big things. And he's been classing this, so really good to use. Lindsay Dorado, 87. Aiden English, 88. Technically, Rockstar's bad at 90 because we do have them. We just don't really use them. John Cena at 94. Becky Lynch is the first female at 96, but it's good to see a good 120 place increase from the year before. So I'd like to be her. That's brilliant to see. And that's all for the top 100. So we'll just have to try and fire through these. We see Sasha Banks at 105. Ronda Rousey makes her debut at 111. Diamante we don't have. Get mixed up with somebody else. Just quick look through here. Even just names that are familiar. Joe Coffey, 128, Mark Coffey, 129. So good to see them breaking quite high. Uh, Naito in at 131. Charlotte at 134. So that's her joint highest, apart from uh, obviously it started. Tommy End, aka Alistair Black, in at 137. Dana Brooke has 138, so yet to break the top 100. That was a very surprising one. 
139. Alicia Fox. She's wrestling for Triple A in Mexico. Good honour, fair play. Uh, Paige in at 141, her second highest rating. Then we've got the likes of Scott Dawson, Dash Wilder, and at 144 and 145. Uh, who else is with us? Cesaro, 154, former tag team partner. Hero, 155. Marty Scurll, 157. Kyle O'Reilly, 158. So all these guys getting good increases. So I'm sure there'll be a lot of guys that we had that are massively down, like AJ drops 100 places. Massive physical decline, which is really showing. Ruby Riot, second year in at 168, again of nearly 3 over, 300 places. So it's good to see that she's really developing. I want her to be someone that breaks the, the 100 barrier, quite on a regular basis. I think what lets the women down is, even though they've got storylines attached to a lot of the main events, on Women's Revolution, because it's a B show, they only really get, like, 78s rather than, you know, the 90s that the males will constantly get in the main event. We put them in pay-per-view main events, why so they knock it out of the park, but I think that's one thing that hampers them. Let's see if we get anything else. Tony Storm at 188, so quite a good few females in the top 200. That's good to see they've really come on, that's pleasing. Jay White stays in the same place at 193, and that is all the WWE talents for the top 200. King Neville at 201. Massive. Drop for him, Mia Yim up 200 places to 202. Shane Strickland, he, no, he didn't use Mojo really much anymore, yeah, but he's at 207. 208 for Strickland, 209 for Liv Morgan, 210 for Dolph Ziggler, who's going to be leaving, or well, not going to renew his contract, uh, 42 or something, so he's going to go. Nicky Storm at 211. Bobby Fish, 214. Bailey, 216. Jay Briscoe, 219. Sarah Logan, 224. So that's quite cool. Hopefully, we can get her back into the top 200. Let's see Fandango. Apollo Cruz at 229. Let's see who else we can find. So it was 229. Will Osprey, 234. So a little gain for Will. We'll push him on further next year. Rhea Ripley up to 236. So a good little push for her this year. Chelsea Green makes her debut at 2.44, just ahead of New Day members at the, at the time. Big E at 2.45, so he's massively dropped off. He's been jobbing a lot, and yeah. We need to put him and Creed together, cause, or maybe even Kofi, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure something out, because Kofi's done with a decline, so hopefully we can put him in. Probably more so with Big E, because Creed's doing quite good bits. He's a former Cruiserweight champion, of course he is suspended, so likely the other two until comes back in a, a long, long time. Expect maybe Big E to move to SmackDown or Kofi to Raw for a Superstar Shake-Up, which will be basically the day after WrestleMania. So you get a few of these spoilers as we go on, but it might not happen. I'm always one that tends to change my mind at the last minute. So, 2.50, we've got Jason Jordan, we've got 2.59, Mark Briscoe, and other WWE members, 2.62 for Daniels, and 2.65 for Kazarian. Keep going down. Who's with us these days? Shelton Benjamin, 284. It's good to see that our legends getting in there. Matt Seidel, Evan Bourne. We don't use him a lot, but he's a steady hand at 290. Uh, we've still got Rich Swan at 294, so it's his. It was higher than last year, not great. Something like that. Leo Rush, up to his highest rating with 302. That's good to see. Drew Gulak, 304. His second highest rating after a good run, probably with Catch Point in 2019. Uh, Lashley's coming back. He's literally a one off appearance. Uh, who have we got? Who have we got? Who have we got? Shinhist, 315. Not really done much with them, admittedly. Former member Sawyer, he's at 317. He should be a Ring of Honor. He's a Ring of Honor tag champ. But we'll look into that in the next episode. That is going to be checking out various other promotions. 318 goes to EC3. It's good to see Eddie Edwards at 319. Famita at 322. I nearly need to push him. He's getting to that age where it's like, are you going to pull the trigger and push him? Isla Dawn at 329. Just behind Pentagon Jr. Not with us, but still cool to, to check that out. Damon O'Connor, Killian Dane, 331. 334, 
for Cedric Alexander. Sonny Danza, I believe, is Reza. That is Akum, sorry. 337. The Nasta, who we do have, 339, David Richards as well in there. Leroy Gouley, one of our new generated guys, making a push going forward. 341, 344. Tyson Kidd, 346, Chile the Melissa, she's still with us. Yep. That's bad and you don't know who's with your company, but that is what it is. CJ Robinson, 349. Zar there at 352. 357 for Alexa Bliss. Hopefully, big things for her next year. So, just 150 odd to go. Ishimori, we've still got, but mostly job out. 362. Here we got none of them. That's good, that's good. That'll get you quite high. Get that. Asuka now down at 376. Probably should let her go. She's 40. Her skills are still good. I don't know why I haven't persisted in a push with her again. But maybe, maybe one more time. One final run for Asuka. So look there. Nobody else I can roll. Mandy Rose at 390. So that's our second highest rating. It's cool to see. Get in there. Big Fally in up at 393. The Vary in there. Oh, we've got Alex Shelley, former wrestler, 400. I think he's retired and saved. Now he's still active with TNA. Unfortunately, retired in real life. But best of luck to him. He's a. Yeah, I really enjoyed watching it. It was a massive shame. Never got to WWE, but I'm sure, you know, he's definitely going to be happy with a career that went TNA, Ring of Honor, you know, Japan. I think he should be really happy with it. Yeah, 401 for Wade Barrett, 402 for Jeff Hardy. Of course, we've still got him. Development talent, Pavel Kirkin gets his highest at 410. He will debut eventually, and it's going to be madness. Uh, Etienne Grenier, one of our younger talents. Lucky Cannon, 419. Kobe Carino, obviously now up in the main roster, just using him as a job or just now, but you'll get a push at 423. Keep looking through here. Akuma, 429. Seamus, 430. Physical decline has just crippled him. Sonia Deville makes her debut at 432. TG in there, jobbing. We've also got Rey Mysterio putting people over just because of his age. Mustafa Ali debuts at 443. And quick kill to see Kelly Ray at 448 and a debut I'd imagine for Barbie Hayden as we continue to push that character where she's not a Barbie, she wants to be a wrestler. So that's 449. Sean Ricker, we do have him, we just don't use him. 450. Peyton Royce, 457. Few familiar faces there. 452 for Billy Kay. Um, but yeah, a lot of people there. Tony Nice, Candice Lurie, people we've had that have let go. Nixon, no. 459, she had a good couple of matches as NXT Women's Champion. No way, Jose. Jobs out, but he gets on the list at 465. James Ellsworth is in the top 500. Putting female wrestlers over, but done it great. And yeah, deserves his position there. 469 for Matt Riddle. Aaliyah gets in at 471. And who else have we got to fit in there? So that's. Emma, 476, so obviously she's been putting people over, and that's why she is where she is. If we'll be in at 481, and in terms of wrestlers for us, that might be us, I think. Tyler Bate, 500. As where it is. We just need to get him over this injury he's got, so that's the top 500, a couple of wrestlers in and about there. Um, I didn't think we saw Dolph Ziggler in that, so that's someone, as I say, that's is going anyway. 28 days, so he'll probably should make the rumble, I believe. Um, I'm clicking the wrong thing here. I don't know. What match I want to click here. There we go. I was in at 210, but as I say, someone 40% towards a Hall of Mortals, so he won't get that, but he'll get a WWE Hall of Fame. Uh, title belts I've given him. He's had two United States titles run and a world tag team title run with Jason Jordan, so not a lot of success, but still cool to see. So going forward, all injuries are workable injuries, so it's Kazarian with chronic shoulder pain and Tyler Bate with a year of knee tendonitis. Lashley's fatigue, but he's a one-off appearance, probably just put him in the rumble. We're missing Xavier Woods for four months and a week due to rehab. 
46 days for Ali's maternity leave, 53 for Dana Brooks, and then we'll probably push them when they come back. Mystique's suspended for one more day, so he'll be back for the next video. And Rizza has five months of the MMA training. Took the fight over WrestleMania, what can I say? But that's going to be it for the roundup of the top 500. What we do now is another video next week, basically documenting what's happening in TNA, Ring of Honor, New Japan, etc. etc. The basically the top companies in the world in game, because a lot of the indies I may, may not have bought over. Like Lucha Underground. I'm sorry. But just watching, much appreciated. And yeah, of course, let us know who you want to win the Rumble, because I still don't have a clue. Just watching, enjoy the rest of your day. Hopefully I'll see you next week for the roundup of the wrestling industry. Bye bye.